big win in Columbus over the Bucks. We'll take a closer look at Michigan's Rock of Gibraltar up front, and we'll look back on Gary Muller's first year as Michigan's head coach. All that and more coming up next. One of the reasons we played with a hell of a lot of most we had to come together because we were missing one of our great players, one of our great friends. And the game ball goes to Trip Wellborn. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 You got right. it. Most of all, he was with us today. Exactly. Oh hey, hey, right. hey, I want two game balls, and I want the other game ball to hang in the defensive meeting room. And, John, you get... Woo! Everybody, welcome to Michigan Replay. Not a bad way to end a Thanksgiving weekend. A 16-13 win over Ohio State in Columbus on a last-second field goal. Did you write the script or what? I don't know if I wrote it exactly like that, Jim, but I, I'm very pleased and very happy to feel comfortable with our defense. I thought our offense at times was a little shaky and wanted to do more there, but... Uh, the effort we had out of our defense was just fantastic. You know, you talked about this team over the past year not being a very emotional team. Well, in that locker room scene we just saw, that was an emotional team, wasn't it? Yeah, and they got there, I think, a little bit the second half of the Minnesota game when we tried to carry that on uh, uh, this week, and it worked out. This we get started here in a drive, and, and, you know, Elvis does a good play action fake there and hits uh, Desmond here. Here's an unfortunate break for us. We hit Bunch. Bunch runs extremely strong here. First possession, picks up a first down, and there goes the fumble. Not only do they get it, and this is the first time we've ever had this happen to us this year, Jim, where they ran a fumble back. And then they come back. You stop them, though, defensively, force them to go for three, and you said that's a good sign. Oh, yeah, because usually your defense coming out in an opening drive has a tough time there because they, they're going to get some new things thrown at them. So that was a big, big stop by our defense. Late in the first quarter, you go to Ricky Powers at tailback, and boy, he stood tall. Yes, he, Ricky made a lot of great cuts and uh, ran over some people, as you'll see here throughout this tape. And then here you got uh, Desmond making a great catch and running after the ball after Elvis comes off a play action fake. Desmond has done a great job for us all year, as you know, Jim. Did you want to run it as much as you did, or did you want to throw it more than you just were taking it away? Yeah, they were taking it away, and I thought some of the runs were there. And quite obviously, some of our younger players, and Ricky ran strong. And, and I think with a couple of years' experience, he'd have got about 175 today. I really believe that. He made some young cuts that were not right, but these cuts here <laughs> look pretty good. For okay, a that doesn't I'll look too those, bad right. for a true freshman. Exactly. The thing is, you get, you get down close, you move the ball real well on the ground, powers is running well, but then you can't go line off and hurt you. Can't punch it in, and, and as I said earlier, we, we had a couple plays, this one here in particular on third and three, we got to bring this back inside, he can't bounce it outside. And those are young mistakes, and yet I'm very, very pleased, as I told you, by the way he played. J.D. Carlson gets the kick, and this one barely gets through. Yeah, this is a line drive. This is the idea you don't have a great surface to practice on at home and because of the grass and things, and it's a little new, and even the extra point was very important, and we... Always watch that closely, too. Here, we just about got a big break here. Coleman Wallace goes down and causes a fumble, but their guy fell on it. Our special teams, again, did a good job shining for us. And the defense really does the job. Right. Here, we force him to throw a little quicker and over the top, and Lance Dotton has an interception. Kind of like last week, had to have great concentration, bobble the ball, and pulled it in and uh, give us field position. Again, we get stopped, and J.D. comes through with a field goal. That makes it 6-3 at that point. And with the turnovers, uh, you look pretty good, even though you haven't been able to punch it in. You, you still look pretty good at this point until they go on this drive. Right. you gotta you got to come up with some uh, touchdowns in there, Jim. Uh, here they hit Scotty Graham over the middle on a little delay. And this is the worst drive, I think, of the day. This one in the at the beginning of the second half that our defense had. They run the option. That was a surprise. Wasn't right. It? There was the option, and that's the play that they called on fourth down, and we stuffed the lead to the field goal. Here was a big play in this diet. We had the fry bottled up, and then we give him, he bounces out of there on a three-man rush, has too much time to throw, and hits Graham on a big play, and that really hurt. This is the only run that that young freshman Robert Smith makes against you. Exactly. We did a good job bottling him up, and as I told you going in the game, it, it was scared of that because Tripp's the only guy that we really had to run people down. Then uh, here Fry comes back and hits Graham on a slant pass, and, and uh, which is a big play there for them. And 10-6 at halftime, you got to be wondering uh, 
Wait a minute. This isn't the way I had it planned. The offense not playing as well as you'd like. Right, because I thought we'd have a better offensive uh, showing, particularly early. And uh, yet I was very w pleased the way the defense was playing. And when you get that situation, you try to play both of them. And as long as your defense is playing well, although you want to move the ball, obviously, and score, you don't want to put your defense in bad field position. Now the Wolverines come back in the second half and come back to win it in dramatic fashion. But while they were in the locker room at halftime, they were thinking about coming back. They were also thinking about one of their fallen heroes also. Very big game, very emotional game, very physical game. I'm happy that we won. And uh, this one was for Tripp. I didn't want to leave that field without winning this game for Tripp. Tripp was at home. He really wanted to play. I talked to him the other night. And uh, number three, we love you, man. We all pretty much knew it was going to be an option, but we had to, like, uh, the front four, you know, all our uh, responsibility is to create a new line of scrimmage, so we were just going low trying to create a new line of scrimmage, and that's what we did. Everyone was fired up. You know, we felt that we had won the game there because we knew our offense was going to go down there and score and kick a field goal or score a touchdown. And T.J. Osmond obviously very happy after that big play on fourth down stopped him, but coming into the second half trailing 10-6, what kind of adjustments did you think you had to make against this Ohio State? Well, they changed a lot of their defense for us, Jim, as a lot of people do, and they were getting us some, a lot of stunning in there, and we picked it up at times, and other times we didn't pick it up very well. Defensively, we just had to keep doing what we were doing, and we'd be in great shape. Yeah, were they doing some things they hadn't done before? Oh, yeah, defensively, they did more than I, they did offensively. Offensively, they come out, and this, again, is a big drive opening the third quarter, and this is something you don't want to see happen opening the half. Right. The drive right before halftime, and then this one uh, are the only two drives I think they really mounted against our defense, which isn't really that bad. Here, Lance, uh, no, this is the one that they hit Robert Smith on for about 26 yards. That was a big play. And then they had a, we stop them, and they have to settle for the field goal. That makes it a 13-6 Ohio State game at this point. But again, the key, you come back and answer immediately. Right, and it's, it's Derek Alexander this time on a uh, kickoff return. Does a great job hitting the seam, getting loose from a uh, would-be tackler, and takes it clear down inside uh, their 40-yard line, which helps set up our touchdown. And again, answering immediately was more emotional for anything, you know, as far as how it got done. Right, it gives your defense that confidence to come back out, too. And obviously, we, we wanted the points and their powers uh, head on a long run. Then here on fourth and one, we went for it. We felt it a couple times in this game if they came up that we were going for it on fourth and one. They you had a lot critical. of crowd noise in there, too, and you got that beaten and That's then come back and out. score. Right. We scored on a very similar play, and this is the one that we missed the two-point play of Michigan State, <laughs> as everyone will remember. It's basically the same play, and Elvis did a great job on the blitz getting the ball to, to Desmond. They come back. Third down long. They were hitting third down passes on you pretty well. Yeah, they did a good job on that. We give them some underneath things to take away the deep ones. And here they, they threw a corner out. We, we should have had that one covered, Jim. That was a breakdown in our coverage, but we had the people in the position. Maybe one of the biggest defensive plays of the game. Right. Lance Dotton played an excellent game, Jim. He really came on. And here he dives just to tip the ball away. And here's Corwin Brown coming over to save probably a touchdown or obviously a big, big game. And then the defense comes up big again, one of your linebackers. Yeah, here Eric Anderson makes a great interception. He doesn't run too well. He reminds me a little of you here changing <laughs> No, 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 direction. no, no. You told me Gerback <laughs> reminded me of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that uh, was a great interception and concentration. And they hit some passes, Jim, but when you pick them off three times, it, it wipes out a lot of those completions. Then you get the ball back, good field position, get a great little crossing route from Desmond, get down. It looks like you're ready to put this away. Yes, and uh, we were gaining a little momentum, getting some field position. Here we're going to throw a deep one. We got Derek open. This is very questionable. If we caught the ball here, or both receivers caught it, it looks appears like a touchdown to me. And, uh, you know, I guess we'll view it from different angles and things, but uh, we should have put that on the money, and Derek should have caught a little better. But... I still think it's a touchdown. T.J. Osmond, big, big play here on the screen pass for minus seven. All right, and that gets, they got the ball at the three-yard line and came out of there, and you stopped them, and then get the ball back again in great field position. Exactly. And then here we hit uh, Derek Alexander around uh, Elvis after a 
Good play action fake, and Derek does a good job with and it. And now it looks like you're ready to put the game away, but then J.D. has his problem. Right. Just about the one where the same distance that we're going to make it on here in a few seconds. <laughs> but, but you said that miss might have helped him later on. Well, I think it, it gets your concentration. On a good kicker, I think what it's going to do is make you concentrate more. On an average kicker, it may make you choke. Here's the big play. Fourth and one, late in the game. There's the option. And really, underneath there, T.J. Osmond, Chris Hutchinson just stuffed their people, basically. And I think they wanted to give it to the fullback there. We took the fullback, changed defenses, took the fullback away from him, and forced them to uh, uh, get, go outside on the option. Here, John Vaughn makes a nice cut for seven yards, setting up. Then Ricky Powers gets us a first down, and then we run out the clock. And as you can see, J.D. had a little concentration on this one. It goes right down the middle. Right down the middle, 16-13. Michigan gets the victory, and I want you to know, Mo, you were about as excited as maybe when you were in college celebrating a victory over Michigan well, when you were yeah. a player, huh? You, you got to believe that there's no other school. Well, Michigan State's very important too, Jim. I have to say that, but that, that's a great way to end up a regular season. There's no question about that. Very, very proud of the kids, the way they hung in there. And the way they hung in there, the way they came back, it was very, very big. And this game, you know, going into the game, Mo, I want you to know there are a lot of people out there who said, you know, I don't think Michigan can win this. Did you hear that same kind of feeling? Well, you know, as we, we said earlier, after that Iowa loss, we're going to tune out the outside world and uh, just do our own thing and stay together as a team. And, and the character of our guys really showed, particularly the seniors, because they wanted to win this thing outright. There's no question about that. And we had some tough breaks. And let's make it clear. The University of Michigan team in 1990 is champions of the Big Ten. Three times in three years in a row, shared or won outright the Big Ten championship, right? Exactly. And You're not too proud of no, that. No, no. I, I, uh, <laughs> thank God for those gophers. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking off Iowa. Everybody thought they were a little, uh, you know, they weren't supposed to give us a tough match last week. Well, it just shows you there's a lot of parity here. You bet there is. And the Wolverines are... One of the champions of the Big Ten in 1990. Uh, we'll be back to take a look at Dean Dingman, one of Michigan's best. But first, we hear from the man who went from goat to hero against the Buckeyes. You know, as soon as I missed, I was thinking about a second chance and just keeping my head down better and kicking the ball a lot better. As soon as I kicked the ball, I know whether it was good or not. So I just jumped up and ran on the field to my teammates. You know, that's, you know, there's nothing to, you can't describe that feeling. You really can't. Michigan's offensive line has received high compliments this year, and running back John Vaughn's 1,000-yard-plus season is a perfect example that those compliments are deserved. The leader of the big guys up front is Dean Dingman. The All-American senior guard has had a great year, and the success of the offensive line is no accident. We've put a lot of pressure on ourselves. The whole offensive line, uh, Greg and Tom, you know, we talk about a lot of things. And uh, last year against Notre Dame, our offense line really got criticized a lot for being too heavy. And uh, we really tried to bulk up a lot. We really wanted to have a big offense line two years ago. And this year, with Coach Moeller's aspect, he really wanted everyone to lose a lot of weight and really be a well in shape line and be able to run all over the field and really be just a hustling unit. And I think it's made the off playing offense line a lot more fun than just blocking one person. You can block someone and then go downfield and, you know, block a smaller guy like a DB or something when he's not expecting it. Dingman and his trimmed-down compatriots certainly have had their fun. And another reason for the good times is directly related to the time they've spent together. There just isn't any substitute for experience up front. Being able to play together so long, you really start to know what your buddy next to you is going to do and what's going to happen. If something happens, you just have to react to it, and you really know how they're going to react to it. Um, you get, you're always working in combination with someone. I mean, if either I'll be working out with a tackle or we're going down working with the center, and, you know, taking over two different people. Like, so you have to know what to expect and how they're going to play the position. Dingman and friends are the leaders of this Michigan team, but they work in relative anonymity. They have a scoring system that rewards them for pancakes when they knock an opponent flat on his back, knockdowns, and cut blocks. These stats don't appear in the paper, but they're just as important to the offensive line. A running back can look at the statistics and know that they're getting five yards of carry, they're doing well, or, you know, a thousand yard season, where this gives us something to really focus on and have something to, you know, personally look forward to. They truly are team players. 
They have always been a different breed of football player, and Dean Dingman is exceptional in an exceptional group. Offense lineman is someone who's really a blue-collar player. You know, you're, you're, you love to get dirty. You, uh, you know, if we could play on grass in the rain all the time, it'd be the best thing. And, uh, you know, and the thing about it is, that's why offense linemen always stick together so much, because you're always working together. And you are, most of everybody's the same mentality, so you get along together so well that you stick together. And you